welcome to the City Wealth Live Sessions. Today I introduce Megan Jenkins and she's a partner at Sorcerer's Partners who are wealth managers. She's also a gold winner in our Future Leaders Awards. So Megan, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Great pleasure. So give us a download on you and the organisation. Sure. So um, I work for Solchus. I'm a partner and financial planner for Solchus. We're a wealth management company that um, help um, private individuals and um, uh, institutions with their kind of financial planning and investment management needs. So that um, for me, I'm a financial planner. So that involves working with private clients on their um, retirement planning, their investment planning, maybe legacy planning and tax planning. Great. That's uh, probably very much in need at the moment, I'm sure. Yeah. So tell us what's what's currently on your desk or occupying your time? So um, there are a lot of things um, on my desk at the moment. I, I think during the pandemic, um, it's made clients kind of reassess what they want from life and what they want from their money. Um, I've had a lot of clients coming to me wanting to retire sooner than planned, um, perhaps a selling a business um, and are kind of going through quite a few life events. So um, one of the main things that um, I do with clients is, is kind of cash flow planning. So thinking about where they are today, um, what their goals are, what they want to achieve with their money and, and how we can help them get there in the future. Uh, so that's quite a lot of what I've been doing with my clients recently. Oh, yes, indeed. Important work. So tell us about a challenging client matter you've been working on. Yeah, I was having a think about this one. And there's so many different types of challenging client uh, matters that you work on. I think one of the really challenging ones that I had um, during the pandemic, actually, was a, um, a lady who had just gone through a divorce. Um, she also um, had a um, inoperable brain tumour um, during this time. Um, it was in a very emotional case. Um, there wasn't, you know, large assets behind her. And we had to try and work out a way that she could kind of achieve what that she wanted to with, with these funds that she was getting. Um, and, and also think about how, how she might be able to access a pension that she was receiving. Um, she was under the age of being able to access it. Um, so we had to, you know, get lots of um, consultants, some reports and summaries from her GP to kind of prove that you know she um, should be able to access her pension um, so it was a really emotional um, a really emotional case and we kind of got to the end of it and um, things did go in her favor which were, was was great and it was um, it was such a lovely feeling at the end you know when when she turned around and said you know I don't know what I would have done without this and um, without the, these funds. And so that was really kind of challenging, but rewarding at the same time. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, well done on that. Um, so tell us about a valuable lesson that you've learned throughout your career. A lot of valuable lessons. Um, <laughs> but I think the main one, um, particularly working with clients and thinking about, you know, what they want to achieve with life and their goals is actually sitting back and listening. Um, one of the um, main ways that I think young advisors come unstuck is that they um, want to kind of prove their worth, prove their technical knowledge and, and are kind of almost competing with the kind of age and experience that's in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and, and actually what clients want is they want someone that can listen and help them achieve what it is that they want to achieve. And so I definitely had, you know, a bit of that imposter syndrome when I first started and, and, you know, wanting to kind of show a client everything that I had learned during my exams and qualifications, but actually um, sitting back and listening is, is kind of the main thing. Um, and that's probably the most valuable thing I've learned during my career so far. Yeah, and we, we actually run a, a, a club for first and second jobbers, which I'm not saying that's you, but actually we do see that quite a bit. So you're right, I think, on that one. So um, a defining career moment. Um, so actually, it's kind of off the back of the last point. Um, I think one of the most defining career moments for me was actually a client meeting. Um, and I had been working really hard on how I kind of structure my client meetings, make sure that I um, kind of get across the information that I want to, but in a really client friendly, jargon free way, because finance, pensions, investments can be, you know, filled with jargon that the that, that everyday person doesn't really understand. And I had this one meeting and 
and the clients at, at the end of it said to me you know this is great we completely under, understand you know where it is you're taking us and this is really enlightening and I had and after that meeting, it kind of made me think about how I approach my client meetings. And that was, you know, a really um, key moment for me. And I think off the back of that, the way that I deal with clients has changed um, because, you know, I, you know, I'm in a couple of years into advising and um, it's, you know, it's a big learning experience. But that was a really defining moment for how I work with my clients. Oh, it's good to see that you're uh, you're thinking about it, which is great. And so, technology has taken a big role in people's lives. I mean, it is here um, to stay. So, how how do you keep ahead of that at, at the organisation? Technology is huge for us here. Um, yeah. You know, there's this always this thing about robo advice versus um, human advice, and I think actually what clients really want is somewhere in the middle. They want some. They want an organization that can make the life easy for them. That's what we're here for. We're, we're here to um, kind of take the worry away um, from their money and how and how to kind of um, run their money. So we've invested quite a lot in making things accessible. You know, what can you get on your mobile phone? Um, so we've launched um, a new app recently, which... Um, <laughs> is going to change a lot of the ways that we deal with clients so you know doing forms on your phone instead of having to fill out lots of paperwork and sending it back in the post um and i think the other way is is cash flows and and the kind of technology that surrounds that um cash flow planning is really key when working with clients and um that's really something that's been integrated and we're trying to build in our full advice process um is is the use of cash flow planning software to kind of bring the advice to life oh yes that's important isn't it just to to give people an idea isn't it of what what they've yeah. got left yeah oh, interesting um okay so what's keeping you up at night at the moment um, probably something that keeps a lot of people up at night, but kind of work-life balance, um, making sure that I'm not taking work home with me. Um, it's, it, you know, it's a huge responsibility, um, you know, looking after someone's wealth and they've, you know, amassed it through their lifetime or they've received an inheritance, for example, and this wealth isn't going to come again. And it's really important for us that we really understand, you know, what the clients feel and how they, how they want this money managed. And so I do find myself often taking that home with me and that kind of, almost that burden taking the worry off them but putting the worry on on me and um so I've been working really hard in um trying to kind of um keep things separate um kind of my home and work and it is a lot harder with working from home uh, a lot of the time yeah. well at the moment is it does yeah. encroach on your um on, encroach on your on your life in your evenings Yes, we've had a lot of feedback about that. In essence, it should be better, but unfortunately, yeah. it seems it is not. So uh, yeah. it's a, another step in the cycle, isn't it, that we'll all have to have a think about and see what the best practices are. But yes, other people think that as well, indeed. Yeah. So um, moving on to more sort of lifestyle questions. In fact, they are lifestyle questions. Um, so a favourite restaurant for a client meeting or otherwise? Um, so... I don't tend to take clients to restaurants. What we're talking about is really personal stuff. Um, you know, we're talking about their life, their family, maybe their health and their finances. Um, so most of the time we do our client meetings either in the office or in their home um, to keep you know them comfortable. Um, but occasionally we'll take um, clients out, but that's usually to, you know, their favorite local pub. Um, but nothing, nothing too extravagant, but just somewhere that they feel comfortable. Yeah, okay, good answer. And so a hobby or a pastime? Um, I love music. So I love all kinds of music, really. I love going to gigs, festivals. Um, I love musicals. I'm a massive musical nerd. Um, so I, yeah, I do. I Music's my kind of favourite thing to do, kind of going to gigs every, every month or a couple of times a month. So what's your favourite musical? Well, I hate to say it because everybody um, puts me down for it, but it is Wicked. I love Wicked. Oh, I've seen it. Good I've seen it so many times and I just love the music in it. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. It's a recommendation yeah. indeed, isn't it? So that's great. Okay. In the office, coffee, tea or something else? 
coffee but decaf I'm not very good on caffeine um it keeps me up at night and I get a bit um almost hyper on coffee so I have to stick to decaf yeah uh, me as well okay uh we're on to word association game and uh the first word we have I think will be very popular with a lot of people beach really <laughs> Yeah. I love the beach. <laughs> but it's so pretty as well, isn't it? The golden beaches and oh it just makes yeah. everyone happy, doesn't it, I think. Any exactly. any any beach you like in particular? Well, I'm very fortunate that I live quite near to the beach and so I can go for a beach walk in the morning and at lunchtime. And so I'm probably gonna say South Sea Beach because it's my kind of home and that's where I go for go for my walks to kind of unwind. Okay, nice, good recommendation. Uh, and then your second word is travel. Freedom you know, learning new things, experiences, pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Um, that's why I love travel. And then the third one, I think you've given us a bit of a hint about it, but it's music. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I love it. So I'm always listening to music whilst I'm working, uh, when I'm driving, when I'm on a walk. Um, I have mu playlists for every single kind of eventuality. So um, music is definitely something that gets me through the day. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you so much. Today we were talking to Megan Jenkins and she is a partner at Sorters Partners. So thank you so much, Megan. Thank you so much for having me. A great pleasure. If you enjoyed this video, please press the thumbs up and subscribe and we'll let you know about other videos that are coming up. Just a reminder, today we spoke to Megan Jenkins and she is a partner at Sorters Partners Wealth Managers. Mm -hmm.